Pentatonics, a fun scale with five notes. They're a chameleon collection of pitches that work in a variety of settings and situations. They're fun to teach, and kids love things with five sides, like starfish and the little pattern on soccer balls and pentagrams. <laughs> <laughs> Kids. Hi, and welcome to the Saxophone Academy channel. I'm Dr. Wally Wallace, and if you're interested in saxophone masterclasses and product reviews, please do subscribe and be sure to hit the like button to make sure your pentatonic scales don't turn into quadratonic scales. Now, today we're talking about the pentatonic scale, a five note collection. We've got a built-in workshop for both alto and tenor with call and response exercises and a free PDF download you can download in the description below with all these exercises written out for you. Now this lesson is the first in a three-part series dealing with the pentatonic scale. Today we're just gonna be doing a diatonic treatment, finding interesting ways of using the scale in its natural form. Next week we're gonna do surround tones and the following week we're gonna do some chromatic alterations, stepping outside the key and hitting some distant relative keys to create a very 1960s beginning of the avant-garde jazz sound. It's gonna be a lot of fun. So first things first, let's see how it's built. The pentatonic scale is of course a collection of five notes, hence the penta, the root word. I'm sure we all learned in school at some point. Now, you'll notice the notes are essentially the first, third, fourth, fifth, and seventh scale degree of a natural minor scale, D natural in this case, the D natural minor of the scale. And it does contain all the chord tones of a D minor seven chord. And it's also got the same notes of the relative major, which is F major. And there is a major form of the pentatonic we may cover in a later series, but we're dealing just with the minor pentatonic right now. Now the minor pentatonic scale works very well over a variety of settings and musical styles. It's great over the blues, rock, fusion, groove-based music, and it works exceptionally well over modal music as well. You can get a lot of mileage out of this collection of five notes. Now taking a look at the scale, you'll notice it looks incredibly similar to the blues scale, but without the chromatic passing tone between the fourth and fifth scale degree. And that's part of what makes it such a powerful tool, especially for beginning improvisers. There's no half steps, no chromatic tones, and it's not particularly dissonant if you land on any of those tones in the pentatonic scale, if you put it in the correct key area. So far, so good, but that also means it can sound incredibly dull very quickly. Beginning improvisers have a tendency to learn the basic five notes, myself included when I was learning, and just kind of noodle up and down, and it gets old very quickly. So today we're gonna look at some ways to make this more interesting, find how do we develop the pentatonic scale using just the notes of the scale diatonically, and see if we can make it much more interesting and build some interesting melodic lines for you to solo with. So step one, let's take the scale, instead of just going up and down, let's create a sequence. Now a sequence is just a pattern or a set of notes where you repeat the pattern at a different pitch level. So in example one, we see a ascending pattern of four notes repeated on each successive scale degree. Let's take a listen. <laughs> Not terribly complex, but somewhat interesting, and certainly more interesting than just noodling the scale up and down. Now, let's take a look at another example of a sequence. Now, still not terribly complex, but fairly interesting to my ear. Let's take it descending this time and add a little bit more interest. Take a look at example three. Here we see a descending sequence, but we've also added a rest, which creates some fun syncopation and a little bit more rhythmic interest. And likewise, like the rest, we can add longer notes to also create more rhythmic interest and syncopation. And 
And this brings us to an important point, varying your note length. Remember, your job as a soloist is to build melodic ideas over the chord changes, not just to outline the chord changes. That's the rhythm section's job. And melodies have varying lengths of notes, some short, some long. Look at great melodies and you'll see a lot of variety. So let's take a look at an example with some longer notes mixed in, creating a true melody out of these pentatonic scales. Likewise, we can do the same thing with using a little bit of space. Rests are a powerful tool to make notes stand out and create even more interest in your melodic lines. Now, these are just a few ways to take these five simple notes and create some rather interesting lines out of them. We're gonna dive in in the next couple of weeks and deal with even more complex ways, but these are just ways to use them diatonically within the key, not altering these five notes at all. So let's get you playing, do some call and response exercises. I'll play the first four bars, you repeat what I play after me, trying to match my inflection and articulation. Now, once you're comfortable with that, you can do call and response with improvising, where I play the call, and you improvise the response. You take the line I play and alter it or play with it or respond with something altogether, trying and experimenting with these five notes. <laughs>
So practice and have fun. I will see you next week when we start to deal with some surround tones and two weeks after that when we start to deal with some cool chromatic alterations and start to step outside. I will see you very soon and in the meantime, go practice.